westerly direction. Uh, this was this morning's picture. You can see the visible satellite on this side, the infrared satellite on that side. So the sun's kind of, uh, this was taken as the sun was coming up. So uh, we're watching another area out here and another area out here. So uh, this is the infrared picture earlier. And uh, this is the color infrared. And somewhere in that, that blob there is where the, uh, the eye of the typhoon is. And uh, so if you look at this picture, this picture here, the, the bright reds are the really heavy rain. And uh, the greens are light rain, the yellows are moderate rain, and uh, the blues, of course, are the ocean. And this is the uh, water vapor, and uh, this, this gives us an idea how complicated the, uh, the, uh, the atmosphere is. So the whites represent really a lot of moisture, so heavy rain, and the blacks represent very dry air, so the air is sinking. The key thing about this is there's a trough out here, and as the storm moves through, it's going to start turning more to the north and then up to the northeast. Uh, so again, we're watching areas out here and out here. And uh, <coughs> this was from uh, last night's scatterometer day. That's a satellite that uh, can look down and uh, send some energy down and look at the backscatter and determine the, uh, the winds and the wind, wind direction and speed over large swaths of the ocean. So the storm was centered in there, but you can see the uh, most of the uh, heavy heavy uh, winds are on the uh, the east side. Mostly, that's going to be a problem for the CNMI, and uh, not so much for us. And here's the track, the latest track this morning at uh, 7 a.m. And uh, you can see that it's moving uh, pretty much in this direction. Now it's moving right across. Anatahan Volcano, which is a great place for it to move. Nobody lives there. And it keeps the typhoon force winds away from Saipan and away from uh, Alamogan Island. The trouble is, the islands are oriented this direction. The storm's moving perpendicular, it's moving at a fast pace. So what's gonna happen is any little jog, any little change in the, in the direction of the storm is gonna have a major effect on the the kinds of winds that places can affect. Uh, not so much for us, but more for the Northern Mariana Islands. But you can see we're right on the edge of the damaging winds. So, uh, so this is what we're keeping a close watch on. For us, this is the uncertainty. Because this is very narrow, and it's very narrow because the storm is moving at a pretty rapid uh, speed. When they move fast like that, it minimizes the amount of uh, of uh, erratic movement that it can go through. So 70% of the time the storm's gonna, the track's gonna end up in that white area. But that means 30% of the time it could end up uh, outside that white area. And uh, this morning the storm was at 7 a.m. was located at 15.1 north latitude, 150.3 longitude, about 390 miles east-northeast of uh, Guam and about 350 miles east-northeast of Rhoda, and about 315 uh, uh, east of uh, Tinian, and 305 miles east of uh, Saipan. Come on in. Come on in. Okay. So anyway, uh, current movement is toward the west-northwest, about 285 degrees at 16 miles per hour. Yesterday afternoon, we noted that uh, it was uh, moving toward the southwest. And of course, Manghut moved toward the southwest and actually came across the Rota. So, uh, so we're, we're watching it very closely. And then early this morning, it started to resume a more of a west and then west-northwest uh, direction. So uh, excuse me, that was good news for uh, us. We just have to make sure it maintains that course. Current winds are 75 miles per hour with best to 90 miles per hour. This is an intensity. When they get to be around 75 miles per hour to about 100 miles per hour, 115, 110 miles per hour, that's optimal for rapid intensification. So uh, that's something we're going to be watching. And rapid intensification means that they're going to intensify uh, at a much faster rate than normal. So, uh, so we've seen some storms do that. Whoopin, we saw Whoopin do, do that. We saw 
you, you two do that. We even saw Sotolor do that. So uh, it's not uncommon out here. Damaging winds right now, we're projected uh, later this morning, uh, 185 miles for the damaging winds. Those are 39 mile per hour winds. Destructive winds, those are the 58 mile per hour winds out to 115 miles. And then typhoon winds, uh, 35 miles. Uh, CPA, closest point of approach early Tuesday morning is a category two typhoon. Maybe somewhere between uh, 50 and 60 miles north of Saipan. And of course, if the storm uh, rapidly intensifies, it could even become a category four typhoon as it passes through the area. Onset of 39 mile per hour winds for us early Tuesday morning and the onset time of uh, 58 mile per hour winds. We don't expect any destructive winds or typhoon force winds here. Max sustained winds predicted for Saipan and Tinian are 65 to 75 miles per hour and uh, late Monday to early Tuesday and then uh, for Rota about 45 to 50 miles per hour. So, Oops. So this is the wind. This is from one of the tools that we have, and this tool shows the changes in wind speed and direction uh, every hour. It also shows how far away the damaging winds are, how far away the destructive winds are, how far away the typhoon force winds are, the eye. But this, for us, it's showing that around one o'clock in the morning until about seven o'clock Tuesday morning, we could experience these uh, these uh, damaging winds. However, it's looking at maybe 40, 41 miles per hour, so it's right on the edge of damaging winds. Probably don't want to shut down the entire island for uh, something that's quite that close for such a short period of time, but we'll make that decision. Uh, we'll make the decision whether we want to go to a warning uh, later on this afternoon, and uh, of course the governor will make the decision whether they go to court, different cores. As, uh, as she sees fit. So uh, anyway, uh, this is the Guam wind. Uh, and if we look at Saipan, you can see right now just a few hours of the destructive winds. Last night, they were in the typhoon force winds. So just a little wobble will change the track enough to, uh, to, to keep them uh, in, to put them in typhoon force winds. So they're in a uh, typhoon warning, Tinian, Saipan, and uh, and the Northern Islands, there's Rhoda. So Rhoda's winds, they're in a tropical storm warning, and they're gonna go from nine tonight till 10 tomorrow morning. So they're in a, they're gonna be expecting damaging winds for a significantly longer period than we will. The seas out there, 14 to 16 foot in the open ocean, uh, of course they could be up around <coughs> 25 or 30 feet around the storm. But we're looking for 14 to 15 foot surf, one to two feet of inundation on uh, windward coast. Dangerous rip currents. These are uh, a place like Gun Beach where the reef is very narrow and the reef is very shallow. Boy, you can get sucked out of there really fast. So uh, high tide information, uh, 2.1 feet around uh, 4.30 this afternoon. And then tomorrow morning around 2.26 in the morning. and. Uh, and uh, tomorrow afternoon around uh, 512. We always plan for high tide. If it happens to hit a low tide, that's great. Thank God, because it'll, it'll cause much less uh, inundation. Precipitation for site penitentiary, we're looking for seven to nine inches. Uh, for us, probably three to five inches. Uh, of course, we can expect more if the storm moves farther south or slows down and less if the storm moves farther north or speeds up. We put out a hydrologic outlook a couple of days ago for this rain event. Now we have uh, probably going to issue flash flood watches uh, this, this afternoon, and uh, uh, at least for road attending the site pan, and a warning later on tonight. We may handle Guam with the urban small stream flood advisory, but we'll be monitoring the radar, and if the radar indicates that we're going to see some really heavy rain, then We'll go ahead and issue a flash flood warning. Currently, Guam's in tropical storm watch. Core four, as far as I know. Kenny and Saipan, Pog and Alamogan are in a typhoon warning. Uh, they're gonna go to core one sometime this morning. 
Agrigan and Rhoda are in Tropical Storm Warning, and they're in Core 2. They'll go to Tropical Storm Core 1 later on. Recommendations, monitor typhoon track intensity characteristics. Guam's in a Tropical Storm Watch. Uh, core 3 was delayed last night, and, uh, and uh, we might not go to Core 3. We might, or they might decide to go to Core 3 and not go to Core 2. Uh, but we're leading against not putting up a Tropical Storm Warning, so... Uh, the thing continues to move away from us, then we won't. Because it's so it's so close to the edge that uh, you know it, it would disrupt uh, a lot of the island. So we'll reevaluate the need for tropical storm warning this afternoon, since those winds aren't predicted to pick up until after midnight anyway. We got some time to play with. Tropical storm gator category B uh, winds on uh, Guam. We uh, we expect 35 to 45, we probably should plan for category, uh, uh, a stronger category B, which would be, uh, which would be uh, uh, 50 to uh, 73 miles per hour. And then uh, for Saipan and Kenyan, right now they expect something like this. We would tell them to prepare for uh, 75 to about 90 mile per hour winds. So. And the typhoon uh, is expected to be uh, Category 2. We categorize storms according to the kinds of damage they do. Category 1 is uh, the lowest category. Category 5 is the strongest category. And so there's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. I would say, uh, so Category 1 is like from uh, 75 to 95 miles per hour. Category 2 is 96 to 110 miles per hour. Category 3 is maybe 111 to 130 miles per hour, category 4, 131 to uh, 160 miles, or 156 miles per hour, and in category 5 is above uh, 156 miles per hour. So that's kind of the way it works. And each one of these does certain kinds of damages. So the category 5 can do as much damage as all the other categories put together. So Worst conditions, early Tuesday morning, keep alert for changes such as southwest movement. Uh, more rapid movement, more rapid intensification. We're going to be updating our warnings uh, every three hours. So uh, remember, the information we put out is perishable. Things change. So make sure you check things out every, every three hours, and then once we get within radar range, we'll be putting out positions about every hour. So uh, That's about it. Any questions? Hold your questions. <laughs> And I'll be out there with the media in just a few minutes, so. Uh. Thank you, Chip. Sure. All right, guys, so that concludes the briefing portion. Now we've got uh, some Q&A time, so if you guys have any questions that you would like um, about the status of Guam right now, uh, the movement of the storm, any projections and everything like that, if you're just joining us right now, you can always scrub back on the video, uh, but we encourage you to actually throw your questions in there right now because we do have, uh, we're going to get some FaceTime uh, directly, not the iOS version. We're actually going to talk face-to-face with ChipGuard um, about what is expected with the typhoon now known as... Uh, Majidis, as Ito was pointing out in the, in the comments. Not with a J, uh, but with a G as in Gates. So uh, thank you very much for pointing that out. Walking backwards is not, <laughs> is not easy, everybody. And if you remember a couple of typhoons ago, one of us here, and by that I mean me, walked right into the wall. So um, uh, we're going to go ahead and set up on the side. So again, if you guys have any questions about what the nature of the weather is supposed to be over the next 48 hours, um, as it stands right now, uh, Chip Guard was actually telling us that Guam is in pretty good condition right now as far as not being in the direct path of any threats with the uh, typhoon out on the water. Uh, situation a little bit more dicey for our friends up north in the NMI, particularly on the upper part, um, Saipan, and as Chip was saying, uh, Alamagan and Agrian, which are the um, unpopulated uh, areas, fortunately for them, but um, they are watching this thing really, really closely. However, that does not mean that the storm doesn't have the probability to either head a little veer a little bit south or intensify even more. So that's what um, the weather experts here are uh, focusing on right now. Again, a typhoon Majidis. It is uh, what's it? Hagibis. What? Hagibis. Hagibis. 
There you go. Ken was just uh, saying it. Hagibis, uh, again, it's uh, native Tagalog, meaning swift and velocity, which is very, very apropos uh, for the Storm Eris chip right now. Uh, making himself all presentable for the cat, like, like he needs to do that. <laughs> chip, good morning to you, my friend. Yes, good morning. All right. Half a day. Half a day. Total Malik. Okay, so th thanks again for the, uh, the wonderful presentation. Um, it's been an interesting time, and again, the, the, the meaning of the name of the storm in, as we've now known, thanks to our friends at Wikipedia, in Tagalog means swift or velocity. Normally, we'd have like three or four days, like usually when storms are coming out. This thing literally just like came on everybody's radar, like in the last, like what, 30 hours? Well, we've been, wa we've been monitoring uh, this area, out, even out toward the dateline. It's been very slow to develop. And so, yeah, just in the last few days, it started to develop. So we, we issued a special weather statement about three days ago, and, uh, and so it's uh, over the course of uh, three or four days, it's uh, intensified. But, it, you know, it started uh, developing uh, fairly close to us. We're, we're tied to the Joint Typhoon Warning Center's numbering system, so until they put out a bulletin on it, you know, we, uh, we have to handle things with a, a special weather statement. But they've done a really good job, and the, the models have been pretty consistent the last couple of days on the track. So we're, we're most concerned about the possibility of it uh, rapidly intensifying. You know, the Mariana Islands are oriented northeast southwest. Mm -hmm. So the, the storm is moving at a fairly rapid uh, pace, about 16 miles per hour. So, and it's moving fairly much perpendicular to the island chain. So any small movement can make a big change in the winds uh, over a specific location, especially like uh, Saipan and Tinian or uh, Alamogan Island up in the Northern Marianas. It's not gonna affect us too much, but it, it, it could be the difference between not having any da damaging winds on us and putting us in the middle of damaging winds. So, uh, Is the behavior of the storm thus far, is that kind of like indicative of what you guys are seeing on a more on a more macro level for this year, you know, with the with the storm season being what it is. And, you know, I mean, like you said, the storm's moving very, very quickly. Um, n not so much erratic movement and everything like that, but is, is this kind of telling about what storms we might see this year? Yeah, well, we haven't had very many storms this year. And so in July, we put out the, we put out the uh, tropical cyclone uh, predictions for uh, the rest of the year, and we indicated uh, we expect to see a concentration in October, November, and December. So unfortunately, this doesn't, isn't disappointing us, and we could see uh, several other storms before the, uh, the end of the year is over. Mm -hmm. Chip, when, when do we expect the onset of the kind of winds and rains that would affect people who live in substandard homes on Guam? Well, uh, probably after midnight. After midnight tonight. Yeah, after midnight tonight, and, uh, and they're gonna be marginal. So I'm not sure that uh, we're, we're gonna issue a warning yet. So we'll, we'll check it out, but it, you know, if it's gonna be, uh, 40 miles an hour, <laughs> it's, or 39 or 40 miles an hour instead of 38 miles an hour, we're probably not going to go to a warning. And by no means are we, we out of the woods, because you said we might expect like three to four inches of rain, which for our friends in the southern part of the island could yeah. still prove to be somewhat problematic. Yeah. No, rain's got, rain could be a problem, and, uh, and I doubt if storm surge is going to be a big problem. But, you know, if people get in the water and they get sucked out into the ocean because of strong rip currents, there's going to be big waves out there then uh, that, that could be a problem as well. an area near Gun Beach? That yeah, Gun Beach is a very narrow reef, and it's a very shallow reef. And so when we get a northwest wind or swell that comes in, it spills a lot of water over the reef, and uh, the water's got to empty it back out into the ocean. So the currents are very strong. And if you get caught in that current, you don't have much time to escape the rip of the grip. And if you don't escape the grip of the rip, you're not going to avoid the grief of the reef. Any other areas? Very nice. And I didn't know you were a poet. Uh, no. I'm sorry? Any other areas people should avoid? Well, uh, uh, you know, Arunau is another one. Uh, uh, Retinian Point is another one. <laughs> These are dangerous areas because not only are they, uh, the reefs are narrow and shallow, but they're very isolated. So people go out there, uh, and if nobody can go for help, then, then you're, you're in dire needs, really. Would you be able to speculate at all? Because uh, assuming that we that we stay on maybe core four or core three, there's going to be a lot of people out on the roads, and especially if they say, you know, you probably should stock up on batteries and fill your water bottles and gas your vehicles and that. The whole, we know the drill. Yeah. Uh, but what are driving conditions projected to be like? Well, the driving conditions are going to be uh, poor when there's a heavy rain, but uh, the heavy rains will come and go. 
not any worse than when we're driving through uh, thunderstorms here on the island, probably. So people just have to slow down and, uh, you know, and, uh, and, and be careful out there because now there will be some areas that are flooded and we, t we have another saying, uh, we are, uh, we do have sayings and one of our sayings is turn around, don't drown. Mm -hmm. So if you see water running and, uh, you know, across the road down at Pago River, you know, do not cross that river. Uh, probably out of Polaris Point, we expect flooding out there. It's not usually the kind of flooding that's going to uh, damage your car or, or cause a lot of destruction, but it is the kind of uh, that, that may uh, cause your car to uh, stop running and you have to stay there. And uh, so these are, these are areas you already know where the major flooding areas are going to be. Uh, down at the Barcinas area in Marizzo, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can expect these uh, normal areas to be flooded uh, when you got a storm like this. Well, I like that. Those of us who work in computer science tend to use acronyms. You guys, you meteorologists, use uh, rhymes. So very nice. Yeah, so. We use rhymes. <laughs> what kind so, of weather are we looking at this afternoon? Well, I think uh, we'll see increasing amount of uh, shower activity. You know, one of my big concerns is lightning. There's a, been a lot of lightning overnight. Usually, over the over the oceans, we see things develop overnight. So I'm thinking tonight probably be the worst conditions uh, tonight in terms of uh, both uh, the winds, the rainfall, and the, uh, and the lightning activity. So sometime tonight between 10 and uh, early morning hours. Uh, things are starting to, uh, to calm down a little in these rain bands, so we might not see so much rain during the day today, but tonight it should pick up. From yeah, what you can see it. For our uh, viewers or our audience for how uncertain uh, things are over the next 24 hours, well, what's uncertain is uh, whether this storm is going to rapidly intensify, and uh, that means that it could, uh, it, instead of uh, being a Category 2 typhoon that we expect to come through with maybe 110 mile per hour winds, it could be a Category 4 with 150 mile per hour winds. So if that were the case, it's going to expand the wind field, uh, affect people more in Saipan and Tinian, but eventually that wind field is going to expand to encompass us as well. As the nature of the storm right now as it stands, is it more wet or is it more windy or a combination of the two? Uh, I would say that it's uh, probably more wet. Mm -hmm. But it's moving at such a fast clip that uh, that's going to trans that's going to move through at a, at a rapid pace as well. So the faster the storm moves through, the better off we are in terms of rainfall, in terms of uh, in the intensification rate. Uh, there's a lot of reasons why we like it to get out of here. So at this time, you don't recommend the governor to uh, change the condition of readiness? Well, you know, we're right on the edge. We're right on the edge. And, uh, you know, we base our decisions on the meteorology. But the governor, she has a lot of other things to be concerned with. And so she has to assess all of these uh, different things that she weighs. So uh, I see no problem with uh, us being in a, in a tropical storm warning and, and and the island not being in uh, uh, another condition of readiness than they're in. So uh, we'll, we'll certainly let them know if uh, we think there's a, a risk out there. Any other questions? So. All right, thanks so much, Chip. Well, well done as always. All right, thank you much. Thank you. Okay, everybody, so you heard from the man himself right there, and, you know, by no means, just because Guam is in a good position right now as far as not being a uh, directly threatened by the typhoon, that does not mean each and every one of us as Guamanians do not need to be um, keeping abreast of the information. That means we all have to at least check in every few hours. Now, remember, we're going to bring up that graphic one more time. Go to this URL that I'm going to say, weather.gov slash G-U-M. Our friends from the National Weather Service update um, – their graphics every six hours at 7171. Remember that. 7 a.m., 1 p.m., 7 p.m., 1 a.m. Uh, and you can have the very latest forecast. Um, it's really helpful information. Share it with your family, share it with your friends. Let everybody know what's going on right there. And just make sure to um, stay very, very frosty over the next few hours and everything like that. Because Chip said, you know, things may change. Um, we're in a pretty good position right now, but we will keep you. Um, informed right now as we remain in a tropical storm watch for the moment. I'm Jason Salas coming to you from the Office of Civil Defense in Again Heights. We'll talk to you guys real soon.